just want to applaud you for everything that you're saying and especially the pay it back, pay it forward model because that's what the vision of the love train really is about. And my challenge has been crossing the bridge of words between vision and reality and helping other people to understand that vision because it really is about giving people what they want as the OJs say. And I just really believe the story is key. See what I did there? Yes. So just <laughs> if you could touch on that, I thank you. No, Thanks, thank you. And I, and I think to your point, it's, uh, it, it is, a, a guy told me this one day, I never forgot it. I was, I was in a meeting, he's a billionaire, and I was just getting started. First question he asked me is, who, who do you give to? Because I was, I was ready to go in there and talk about my financial cue and whatever else. He said, who do, you, who do you give to? So I started rattling off stuff. He said, good, so if you didn't give, I wouldn't want to help you. I don't want to help somebody make money who's not part of philanthropy. You know, and I was like, wow. You know, and I realized people who have gained certain level of wealth and, and um, consciousness understand the importance they play in society. And, and sometimes we think that you have to be that way when you're uber rich, but it really is about character. You know, if you don't give when you have a little, you won't give when you have much. Um, and it really is, um, was an eye-opening piece for me that I started asking that question to members of my staff that I would interview, especially when they wanted a big salary, is who do you give to? What do you, you know, put your time into? You know, because if they're not volunteering, they're not writing checks, they're not supporting, the marketplace, then why would I want to enrich them when they're not helping society that we're working hard to, to change? So I found that it helps create culture within my company and culture within kind of my ecosystem um, that we're all equally aligned. And you know, you know, it's like like the Bible talks about, you know, being, you know, equally yoked, you know, don't plow a field with an ox and an ass. Either get some ox or get some asses. Um, <laughs> Uh, but don't don't do both, right? Because it's not it's not equally yoked. And so I think there's a part of that that really comes into your space as well as leaders in the business world. You know, don't don't, don't just get someone because they're going to help make you money. Find out if they fit your culture. And if your culture is about giving and philanthropy, and you know, I have people from in my company that have different religious perspectives, but we all have a value system that's based upon helping men and helping common men and helping you know, communities and everybody grow and they're so committed to them. We have volunteer days. I don't have to twist anybody's arm, they're there. Um, and some of the most you know, staunchiest people that in the company, they seem like they're you know, real rigid when it comes to helping people, they become a different person out there. I mean, it's like I'm shocked sometimes and, um, about what they, you know, been able to do outside the office. In the office, they're like rough, you know, they're rough to me, and I pay them. Um, but they are very much compassionate about helping people, and I found that to be our silver lining in terms of a company.